Hi everyone, good morning. Today is 13th of Feb and I welcome you all to the Hindu newspaper analysis discussion. Guys, in this particular session, we cover the entire Hindu, but along with Hindu, we also take other important articles for UPSC CSC examination from other sources. In the today's session, the here we are going to take this particular article for mains examination. This article we are going to take for prelims examination and for mapping, we are going to take Singapore. Also, in every session, we take the current affair based MCQ questions for your effective revision. Also, we take up a quotation for the sake of our essay and answer writing. Now, let's get started with the today's session. And also, I would like to tell you that you can download this particular session's notes from our Telegram channel. Link for Telegram is given in description box in YouTube. Now, let's get started. First of all, we are going to take the MCQ questions for practice for today. And guys, I would uh, insist that if uh, I would insist that please attempt these questions and leave your answers in comment box. So first question is with respect to India UAE relationship. So we have seen this particular article that Prime Minister is scheduled to visit UAE and how important UAE is for India that we have seen. UAE is India's largest trading partner. UAE is part of India, Middle East, Europe. Economic corridor infrastructure, choose the correct option. Pause the video, choose the right option, and leave your answer in comment box. The next question is which of the following is not the tributary of Krishna River? Okay, so consider these options and choose the right answer here. The next is choose the following statement with respect to formaldehyde. So, yesterday we have seen this article also. Pause the video, choose the right option, and put post your answer in the comment box. Then moving on. So uh, the day before yesterday's questions and their correct answer, let's now discuss them. So we have discussed this question with respect to build, operate, transfer, BOT model. So questions for statement one, NUT payment assurances reduces the dependence of private player on passenger traffic. NUT payment assurance mean annual payment. Now in build, operate, transfer, no annual payment is made by the government. Project is built, operated and uh, uh, built and operated by the private player then it is transferred to the government so no annual payment is there so first statement is not right government benefits from infrastructure without upfront investment yes government need to put not need not to put the money private sector will put the money so government will ultimately benefit from infrastructure so right option is b then moving on uh, what make pfas highly persistent in the environment forever chemicals we have seen it so the right option is d their resistance to degradation due to strong carbon fluorine bond okay and then uh, consider the following with respect to isro's uh, study to identify methane emission hotspots in india methane is the second largest contributor to climate change after carbon dioxide this statement is true in india methane account for 60 percent of total carbon emission no methane accounts around 14 percent of carbon emissions we have seen this so this stat second statement is not right so the correct option is one only a fine so this is guys about the mcq questions and now let's discuss our articles one by one for the today now every class we start with a gs quotation so today we are going to take quotation from theodore roosevelt so theodore roosevelt says that na the nation behaves well if it treats the natural resources as assets which it must turn over to the next generation increased and not impaired in value so theodore roosevelt in a way is talking about the sustainable development theodore, theodore roosevelt says this particular thing that if nation will treat the natural asset for the sake of augmentation fine if they are to be increased over the period of time for example tree cover for example the uh, now see when we talk about the environment environment provides us ecological services now these ecological services contribute quite immensely in the human development now if these ecological services are to be enhanced then what will happen next generation will be healthy next generation will be more productive but if we exploit these natural resources their ecological services will decline and at the end of the day it is going to impact the human in the long run so for sustainable development it is important that natural resources should be enhanced they should not be exploited you can use this particular uh, quotation for the essays on sustainable development as well as for GS paper number 3, sustainable development, environmental conservation. You can use this particular idea. So that is all for the GS quotation for today. And now let's move on and let's take first article for today. So for mains examination, we are going to cover this particular article. Now, this particular article, guys, uh, first of all, 
the article reads a global alliance to bridge the gender equity gap now this particular article we are going to see with respect to gs paper number 2 as well as gs paper number 1 women women empowerment gender empowerment women related issues now article actually talks about this particular thing that when we talk about the government of india's policy presently so equity okay equality inclusion these are the cornerstones of the india's developmental journey now we find this particular thing guys that when we talk about equality we find that in the context of india often equality it gets hampered when the gender hierarchies come in between because of these gender hierarchies women are often treated that they are subordinate to the men because of the patriarchy women are not given important leadership roles they are not accommodated in economy they are not given important social roles even so equality to the women has not been there because of these patriarchal norms inclusion of women in political processes and economic processes is not there for example when we talk about the female labor force participation rate in india as of now according to periodic labor force survey 22 23 female labor force participation rate in india it just stands around 37% okay so they are not included in economy already if you remember yesterday i told you that in parliament only 15.1% of the parliamentarians are women so political inclusion is also not there but now government has started focusing on equality to the women as well as inclusion and you might be hearing about sabka saath sabka vikas sabka pravas so when sabka saath sabka vikas here sabka includes the women also now recently what happened there was a new delhi leaders declaration that was adopted in g20 so you might already be knowing that 2023 india hosted g20 and in this this particular g20 this new delhi leaders declaration was adopted and this particular declaration specifically talks about the socio economic empowerment for the women it talks about bridging the digital divide for everyone specifically for women driving climate action ensuring food security nutrition health well being okay also these all things digital divide action on climate change food security nutrition health all these particular things will be women centric as well as they will be women led nari shakti okay so nari shakti has been emphasized develop now see earlier development was oriented towards women now women are the ones who are bringing the development okay so basically women led development has been emphasized now also guys apart from this what has happened so recently world economic forum meet happened in january and here also what happened india has taken the steps to launch alliance for global good gender equity and equality alliance for global good now what is this alliance for global good this particular alliance okay uh, it is anchored by the center for women leadership and also it has assistance of minister of women and child development fine now this particular initiative fine also is supported by philanthropy organization such as uh, bill and melinda gates foundation many experts think tanks will, will also be there now this alliance for global this alliance for global good what it is going to focus basically this particular alliance this goal, th this particular alliance is going to focus that how women's and uh, uh, basically how the women can be nudged to pursue the streams of science how women can be brought in more numbers in economic arena how women's political empowerment and political participation can be driven all such things largely the empowerment of women and participation of women will be focused by this alliance for global good gender equity and equality and here different different people experts will come and will suggest that how th that thing should be done now when we talk about guys india india already just few days back have passed the women reservation bill now this women reservation bill aims to re reserve one third of the seats for the women in the parliament okay also when we talk about the budget specifically from last few years gender budgeting is being done under this particular gender budgeting a specific part of budget is allocated for the schemes which will benefit the women and if we talk about the valuation of this gender budget that is the budget specifically for the women its value comes to around 27 billion dollar fine it was in the gender uh, the budget of 23 24 so this all shows the government's serious commitments to empower women now 
further if we talk about uh, further guys if we talk about the women we find that female labor force participation rate though still it is 37% but it has improved over the last few years it was 23.3% in 2017-18 periodic labor force survey but increased to 37% in 2223 even female enrollment in higher education has gone up by 28% in the last 10 years. Women's enrollment in STEM, that is science, technology, engineering and mathematics, their number is going up. And women, 43% of women are enrolled into the science, technology, engineering and mathematics courses, which is the highest rate in the world. So this is something that India is seriously not only preaching, but also doing. Okay. Also guys, now what more is needed? Now more is needed to develop the scalable and practical solutions for the women in edtech. Okay, edtech. Okay, uh, basically technological, basically education which is driven by technology. For example, today many online platforms have emerged. They are the part of the edtech. So in edtech, women are to be promoted in medical capacity building. Okay, delivery of health intervention for women. Women has to be focused learning and skill development okay in the skill development women have to be focused in agro technology fine women have to be promoted we need to promote women led enterprises only then only then only then the true empowerment of women can happen and all these all these are the goals of this alliance for global good gender equity and equality okay now for the industry around the world it is the best time that they should share some of the practices that uh, uh, that we have developed to advance entry of growth of women in the workplace. Now, if you see, women participation in labor force increased to around 23.3% in 2017-18 to 37%. So, obviously, we might have done something which has worked. So, we need to share these particular strategies. We need to share these particular um, good practices with the other industries, other countries. Okay, so this is something that should be focused upon. Now, when we talk about India, India has always followed the philosophy of Vasudev Kutumbakam, that is one earth, one family, one future. And even the Vasudev Kutumbakam, one earth, one family, one future was also an important, uh, an important dimension on which the G2023 was uh, G20 in 2023 was also taken up. So, in the line of the government's governance ideology, sabka saath, sabka prayas, sabka vikas, fine. Alliance for Global Good, which is focusing on gender, it is going to augur well. It is going to contribute constructively here. So that is all guys about it. I hope that you have understood it. And now we'll move to the next article. Okay. So here we have this article. Gandhi's Ram is not in the Ram Mandir. Okay. Gandhi's Ram is not in the Ram Mandir. Now guys, um, uh, Basically, articles talking about too much of religion and all such kind of things are usually not that much important for our examination. But today's article is not on religion per se, but it is on the Gandhiji's view on religion. And this happens to be an important theme in the essay, also in philosoph uh, particularly philosophical essay. And in ethics, GS paper number four, we can see this particular answer, uh, this particular article. So let's get started with it. Now, when we talk about Gandhiji, so guys, Gandhiji was a devout Hindu and he all he always accepted this particular thing that he is Hindu, rather a proud Hindu. And when the Gandhiji was assassinated in 1948, the last breath that Gandhiji took, he spoke the name of Lord Ram, that is He Ram. So we find that Lord Ram, fine Shri Ram, Bhagwan Shri Ram had a great influence of, on Gandhiji from his childhood. Now, when we talk about Gandhiji and his relation with the Lord Ram, this relation is uh, something which is different. Now, he said that Ram Nam that he refers is no longer, no longer, uh, basically, the Lord Ram that he had, that, that, that he worships is not the Lord Ram that is just found in the temple only. Moreover, he is not speaking the name of the Lord Ram just as a part of some ritual. Rather, he takes the name of Lord Ram because of the deep belong, deep uh, connect that he has with the Lord Ram. Now, when we talk about Gandhiji, see, Gandhiji was a spiritual person and Gandhiji always had also advocated in the earlier part that religion should be brought in politics. Religion should be brought in politics. Why? Because according to Gandhiji, religion is nothing but the code of morality. And in politics also we need to have morality. So therefore Gandhiji advocated to bring religion in the, in, in the politics. 
Fine. Also, when you talk about Gandhiji's religion, Gandhiji's idea of religion, it is not the idea of some ritualism. Its idea of religion was rooted in spirituality. Now, one of the Gandhian scholar, that is Mr. Raghavan Iyer, in his book, The Moral and Political Thought of Mahatma Gandhi, he provides this particular thing, that Gandhiji also provided that politics should be religious and religion should be practical. Politics should be religious and religion should be practical. Okay, already I told you that according to Gandhiji, all religion teach morality and such morality should be there in the politics. But later, actually not given in the article, but understand, later when it was found that politics and religion are being leading to communalism. Okay, when in the, for the political purposes you are preaching the religion it led to communalism in the society Gandhiji found that it is not what he intended and then in the later words around 1930s he will not preach the inclusion of religion in politics but initial period he have said this particular thing now Gandhiji also provided this particular thing that apart from the Bhakti Yoga Karma Yoga is also very much important Karma Yoga apart from Bhakti and Gyan Yoga Karma Yoga is also very much important fine now Gandhiji said this particular thing so basically once upon a time uh, a schoolmaster uh, find asked certain questions from the Gandhiji Gandhiji and Gandhiji answered these particular questions in his journal Harijan now what were the questions and you will understand the idea of Gandhiji's own religion through these questions and the answers that he have given so first question was asked is it necessary for a Hindu following the life of Sri Ramchandra to go and see his image in the temple Okay, is it necessary that you have to go to the temper also if you are trying to follow the life of La, Lord Shri Ram? Another question was there. Should we bow our head and join our hands before, uh, b b before an idol? If we are bowing and joining our heads in front of a living person, the person will respond. Okay, but the idol is never going to respond. So, is it right? Should we do that? Then the third question that was asked that whose image a Hindu adores might have committed to some wrong in his own lifetime. Okay, so any any spiritual deity find that you are following might have done something wrong in their own life. So will we should do that also or not? Okay, so if we don't do that wrong, are we doing a, are we following that particular deity properly or not? Now what is Gandhiji's response? Gandhiji's response is that it is not necessary for any Hindu to go to a temple to worship. But if you cannot contemplate without an idol, then you should go to the temple. If you can contemplate without looking the idol, then it is not needed to go to the temple. Okay, so this is one. He says this thing, that deed is more important than darshan. Action is more important than just going to the temple. Okay, and Gandhiji even said that I don't make any difference between the temple, mosque and the church. Temple, mosque and church. According to Gandhiji, all are the places of one God. Wherever you feel, you can go. Also, who is Gandhiji's Ram? Who is Gandhiji's Ram? So, Gandhiji clarified this particular thing and even in one of a prayer meeting in 1946 in Birla House, Delhi, Gandhiji said that I laugh within myself when someone says that Ram or the chanting of Ram Nam is for the Hindus only. Now, Gandhiji says that Sri Ram is not only the Hindu God. According to Gandhiji, he said that Lord Sri Ram is the incarnation of a moral life. Lord Sri Ram is incarnation of the righteous living. And righteous living is provided in every religion. Even you are Christian, you are Jew, you are Muslim. Every religion talks about the righteous living, ethical living. And Lord Ram is the embodiment of ethical living. So even if you are not a Hindu, you should also follow the life of Lord Ram. So according to Gandhiji, there is only one omnipotent and omnipresent God. And this God is named variously. Somebody will call him Ram. Somebody will take other names. So the idea is the same. Okay. Also Gandhiji says that when he worships Ram, he is not worshipping the historical figure of Lord Ram, the son of Dasharat, the king of Ayodhya. But he is, he worships the idea of Lord Ram, which is eternal. Fine. Now, also, Gandhiji said this particular thing. Gandhiji was very careful to not to visit any specific temple, mosque or churches because his idea was more spiritual and not ritualistic. Not ritualistic. In 1929, in the Bhopal, Gandhiji also said that I warn my Muslim friends against misunderstanding me in my use of the word Ram Rajya. So, word Ram Rajya have been used by the Gandhiji to denote an ideal rule. 
सो ही सेज दैट द राम राज्य इज नॉट अ हिंदू राज्य राम राज इज नॉट हिंदू राज राम राज इज राम राज इज अ स्टेट ऑफ पॉलिटिकल डेमोक्रेसी इट इज अ स्टेट ऑफ ट्रू पॉलिटिकल डेमोक्रेसी वे आर द मीनेस्ट सिटीजन विल गेट द स्विफ्ट जस्टिस इवन द डॉग विल गेट अ जस्टिस एंड इफ डॉग डज नॉट गेट द जस्टिस ही विल हैव एवेन्यू टू अप्रोच दैट इन केस इफ इज नॉट गोट द जस्टिस सो दिस इज द राम राज्य वेर एवरी पर्सन एवरी पर्सन पोटेंशियल विल बी फुलफिल्ड इन रिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ देयर रिलीजन देयर कास्ट देयर सेक्स देयर प्लेस ऑफ बर्थ so this is something that gandhi ji's idea on religion is all about so that is all guys about it and now we'll move to the next article okay hygiene sanitation rating system for hotel resorts home stays yet to take off okay so basically guys when we talk about the tourism sector tourism sector is a low hanging fruit for india now when we talk about india india has so much of diversity because of that it attracts a large number of tourists in india moreover when we talk about india india is often called as the soft power capital world soft power so soft power capital of the world now you see this particular thing guys that when we talk about india three great religions found genesis in india and that is hinduism buddhism jainism abrahamic religions were accommodated in india cultural diversity is huge environmental ecological diversity is huge the india is emerging as a land of opportunities because of that large number of true uh, travelers and tourists they come to india for multiple purposes but when they are going to come we need to ensure a comfortable and hygienic stay for them so in this particular capacity a hygiene and sanitation rating system was proposed by the government but it has up till now not yet taken off now so basically so basically this initiative is swachhta green leaf rating swachhta green leaf rating it was launched in 2023 by union tourism ministry in collaboration with the department of drinking water and sanitation and under this swachhta green leaf rating what will be done fine hospitality sector within hospitality sector we have the home stays we have home stays we have resorts we have hotels sanitation will be judged if there is a good sanitation in hotels resorts home stays fine they will be getting a good rating under the swachhta green leaf rating swachhta green leaf rating now this got started as a pilot project in jammu and kashmir but after getting started in jammu and kashmir other states have not shown enthusiasm in this particular scheme it has not been adopted now when we talk about this green leaf green uh, swachhta green leaf rating under this swachhta green leaf rating what will be done there will be the state teams of swachh bharat mission that will be created okay there will be the teams by the tourism department that will be created and they are going to organize workshops and owners operators of hotels hotels motels home stays they will be informed that how they can adopt good practices how they can in, ensure so, so sanitation facilities how they can ensure the solid waste management segregation of the wastage and how that is going to increase their credibility because they will get a favorable rating under the swachhta green leaf rating and often tourists see the rating before going to any facility so under this particular initiative teams under swachh bharat mission teams by the tourism department will be created they will go to operators owners and will tell them the importance of sanitation and how they can adopt it also it has been provided that there will be swachhta green leaf rating system fine uh, with for all the facilities with or without hotel and they will be target they will be ranked they will be ranked who are the target groups hotels lodges home stays dharamshala camps which have portable toilets and a three tier committee will also be proposed will also be created to implement this particular scheme so this is guys all about the sanitation and hygiene rating scheme so that is all about it and now move to the next moving to the next article a cafe of opportunity opens in kolkata now guys this particular article can be used as a case study in gs paper number 2 social justice uh, issues related to the vulnerable section and within that issues related to the empowerment of the disabled people and other vulnerable groups we are going to see this particular article so basically here you see a cafe of opportunities open in kolkata now basically what is this kind of a cafe it is one of a kind of a cafe with which is being operated by 16 young adults and these and these adults nine of them 
nine of them six men and three women they are affected they are affected by the condition such as autism down syndrome or they are orphans or they come from very poor families so these in 16 adults either they are cognitively or physically disabled or they are orphan or they come from very poor families okay they come from very poor families they are being given opportunities and some of them some of them also are the children of sex workers children of sex workers shelter girls rescued from the net from the traffic from the trafficking so this is such a good initiative the children of sex workers orphan children people from poor family people having down syndrome they are operating this particular cafe and the name of the cafe is opportunity cafe opportunity cafe also what is happening they are holding open mic events exhibitions workshops so that more people can get aware about them more people can get aware about them and other people also with such kind of intellectual disabilities or who are coming from such poor poor poor, poor backgrounds they can also start these kind of initiatives so this is a not-for-profit cafe all the earning that will be made here will be invested back for the empowerment of other people from similar conditions so that is about it you can use this particular kind of case studies in your answers fine moving on swati portal swati portal so basically recently government has launched this particular swati portal and the swati portal stands for science for science for women a technology and innovation portal science for women a technology and innovation portal now guys when we talk about women we find this particular thing that though in the first article we have seen that more women are now getting enrolled in the stem but guys still we need to promote more even more women in the stem and we need to not ensure that they are just passively doing a diploma or degree but they should be placed in job also when they are going in the stem scheme so basically this particular swati portal what it aims to do it aims to create a single online portal which will represent indian women and girls in stem that is science technology engineering mathematics and medicine this is stem will double m mathematics and medicine so what will be done so basically women who are working in this particular domains that is science technology engineering mathematics and medicine their entire data they are they are basically their educational qualifications their socio-economic condition whether they are working or not all this particular database will be will be will be curated in this swati portal and this particular database will be used by the policy makers to make the policy for the gender gap fine for example if majority of the women are graduating science but they are not getting the job then government is going to identify the loopholes that why they are why they are graduated but not employable so in this particular direction the uh, policies will be developed now when we talk about this particular portal this portal is an interactive database one of its kind and it is developed and hosted and maintained by national institute of plant genomic research okay so keep it in mind that because if a question comes at who hosts this portal thus national institute of plant genome research will not come in your mind any day okay fine also now it has been provided that it will include every Indian women in science across all career stages, subject inclusion, fine, whether you are in job, whether you are in not in job, where you have reached in your job, on all these particular bases, this particular database is going to be created. So that is all guys about it. Fine. And now we'll move to the next one. Now, the next article is with respect to Rola Padu Wildlife Sanctuary. Rola Padu Wildlife Sanctuary. So basically guys, what has happened? So, Rola Paddu Wildlife Sanctuary, this particular wildlife sanctuary, it is located in Andhra Pradesh. It is located in Andhra Pradesh. And this particular wildlife sanctuary was dedicatedly created for Great Indian Bustard. Great Indian Bustard. Now guys, when we talk about the Great Indian Bustard, so Great Indian Bustard is largely found in the arid and semi-arid region. And it is found in the Rajasthan, Gujarat, certain parts of Madhya Pradesh and even the Andhra Pradesh. However, around 90% of the population of Great Indian Bustard, it lives in the Rajasthan. Now guys, when we talk about the Great Indian Bustard, Great Indian Bustard is an indicator species. It indicates, if Great Indian Bustard are present in good numbers, it indicates that the health of grassland ecosystem is good. Okay, so when we talk about Great Indian Bustard, it has been given, it has been given the status of 
क्रिटिकली एंडेंजर्ड एज पर आईयूसीएन रेड लिस्ट एज पर आईयूएसएन रेड लिस्ट क्रिटिकली एंडेंजर्ड इट इज बिकॉज ऑफ द फैक्ट दैट वेरी फ्यू इंडिविजुअल्स ऑफ द ग्रेट इंडियन बस्टर्ड हैज बीन लेफ्ट has been left and their preservation is now very important so therefore uh, in the states of rajasthan particularly andhra pradesh also there are the great indian bustard wildlife sanctuaries that have been established and this rola padu wildlife sanctuary this rola padu wildlife sanctuary was dedicatedly for the great indian bustard but in the last few years in the last few years great indian bustard has not been seen here so it shows or it depicts that the great indian bustard might have seen a local extinction it he might uh, the great indian bustard might have seen local extinction which is very problematic now when we talk about guys the great indian bustard they face a lot of problems number 1 Great Indian bustard from Rajasthan. They fly to Pakistan, and in Pakistan they are hunted for their meat. Also, Great Indian bustard, their frontal vision is very poor, and because of that, often what happen? They get entangled into the electricity wires, and they get electrocuted. Right now in Rajasthan, a lot of solar power is being deployed, and as solar plant is being deployed, they will be connected with the grid with the wires, and in these wires they can get trapped, and many of the Great Indian bustards have died. and in this capacity judiciary has also said that government should consider laying down the wires underground underground wires now when we talk about the rola padu wildlife sanctuary it is located in the state of andhra pradesh and it lies between nalla malla and yara malla hill ranges nalla malla and yara malla hill ranges fine where on the eastern ghats and this rola padu wildlife sanctuary was declared as a sanctuary in 1988 find to protect the dwindling population of the great indian bustard it is the only great indian bustard sanctuary in andhra pradesh and this particular rola padu wildlife sanctuary has other animal species also such as monitor lizards geckos skunks so skilled vipers and there are the bird varieties such as the lesser florican fine demiosel crane black stork white stork harrier which are also found here so this is guys all about it and now moving to the next article kaval tiger reserve now again kaval tiger reserve is in news first of all why it is in news recently what has happened foreign forest authorities they have taken action against the staff for the negligence in controlling the smuggling of teak wood from the kaval tiger reserve kaval tiger reserve so therefore we are going to see kaval tiger reserve and you see that in prelims examination many number of times the questions on uh, these uh, protected areas etc have been asked now when we talk about kaval tiger reserve when we talk about the kaval tiger reserve it is located in the north eastern part of telangana and it was declared as tiger reserve in 2012 2012 and when we talk about it links it links with the other tiger reserve that is the tadoba tiger reserve of maharashtra and indravati tiger reserve of chatisgarh so it connects tadoba in maharashtra and indravati in chatisgarh okay now vegetation found in this particular tiger reserve it is southern tropical dry deciduous forest are found teak and bamboo are the important plant species and teak is smuggled from here skulder smuggled from here and when we talk about the wildlife so nilgai chosinga black bug sambar wild dog wolf tiger leopard and jungle cat these are the important animals that are found here so uh, when you are raiding any reserve area you need to little bit know about the type of wildlife and biodiversity that is found there fine how you no need to go too much in detail in that now moving on and let's take the mapping entry for today so guys here we see that singapore uk mauritius lead the investments in the solar sector 3860 crore rupees investment has come in last 3 years according to the ministry of new and renewable energy so we have seen that these are the some countries now today we are going to see the mapping of singapore today we are going to see the mapping of singapore why because singapore is the major investor into the solar sector in india so let's get started with it first of all first of all guys when we talk about the states with the highest fdi in solar energy in india between 2023 fine so number 1 is singapore 780 million dollar uk is there mauritius is there and uae is there okay now moving on moving on first of all first of all guys as we talk about the singapore uh you need to understand first of all the water bodies that are there in this particular region important water bodies that are there okay so here 
on the south side we have the strait of singapore south side we have strait of singapore fine see first of all in north we have malaysia in north we have malaysia and between malaysia and singapore we have the strait of johor strait of johor so malaysia strait of johor and then we have singapore then on the southern side we have the strait of singapore we on the southern side we have the strait of singapore and then we have indonesia we have indonesia so again let's see malaysia strait of johor singapore then strait of singapore then indonesia then indonesia so this is the north to south arrangement now guys you might be also might have heard about the sentosa island so here the sentosa islands are there now these are a very famous destination among us amongst the tourists a tourist so here we have the sentosa island sentosa island is on the southern side of singapore fine then apart from that there is this jurong island that we have here then there are the sinang island that we have here okay so these are some of the important islands and here one more important is the tekang island so tekang island is in north senang island juang island and sentosa island are in the south okay then further guys when we talk about this particular entire region as a whole this entire region as a whole there have been certain trade routes also that have been there from time to time and here you have the map of these particular major trade routes now further guys when we talk about when we talk about the singapore so it has it 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 is located on the southern tip of malay peninsula malay peninsula and it is bound by the on the western side there is a strait of malacca in that particular map it is not visible fine it is bound by the strait of malacca towards the west singapore strait in the south already we have seen fine further in the north there is a south china sea on the strait of johor strait of johor also we have seen now when we talk about the word singapore it comes from the singapura sing means lion and it is therefore called as a lion city and the type of climate that is found here it is a tropical climate that is found a uniform climate is found throughout the year okay and when we talk about india india singapore relations date back to the period of cholas to the period of cholas and singapore also it is ranked as the second most important most powerful report in the henley passport index henley passport index and also it is india's largest trading partner under the asean and one very important tamil is one of the four official languages of singapore tamil is one of the four official languages of singapore okay so guys you can see here that south china sea is here so when we talk about the singapore further these are the important mapping locations so guys i hope that you have understood it and with this we come to an end to this particular session guys uh, one more thing that uh, please do leave in the comment box your views on this newspaper analysis video what you are liking if there are certain things that you are not even liking please do let us know in the comment box also leave your lovely comments and suggestions in the comment box because it helps us always to improve further so that is all guys for today now we'll be meeting tomorrow till then please take care of yourselves and please do download these synoptic notes also from telegram channel for your effective revision and understanding so that is all for now now we'll be meeting tomorrow till then please take care of yourselves thank you so much